Hey y'all, this is Lisa Alford coming to you today from beautiful Jacksonville, Florida. I have heard so much about this scary thing called loan level pricing adjustments. And let me tell you, it has been all over the news. It has been all over social media. And all I have heard is just anything from the average home buyer is going to have to pay 40 bucks more a month. Um, even I heard one report on Fox News that said the average buyer buying a home of 250000 was going to be paying like over $1,000 more a month. That ain't true, y'all. But anyway, I wanted to look into this so that we could kind of set the record straight and get the real skinny on exactly what this LLPA or Loan Level Pricing Adjustment really is. Um, I kept hearing a lot of stuff again, you know, you're robbing Peter to pay for Paul and you're getting punished if you have a, a higher credit score and you've saved up more money for a down payment and all this stuff. So I really I wanted to get an expert's opinion on this and just set the record straight because there is a whole lot of misinformation going on out there. And I don't want, I don't want you guys to be scared. You know, I don't want you to be scared of buying a house or of selling your house so that you can buy another one. Or, you know what I mean? It's just, I wanted to set the record straight and put the right information out there for you viewers. So I set up an appointment via Zoom with a good friend of mine who's an expert in this. His name is CJ. That's his nickname anyway. His actual name is Charles Bobola. He is a United States Navy veteran and uh, he is the branch manager for Heroes First Home Loans. So I'm going to let him explain it to you, and hopefully that will take care of any questions that you have. Hey, CJ, how are you doing today? Good, how are you doing? Doing well. Hey, listen, um, I wanted to um, bring you in on this recording because there's been a whole lot of chatter about this new thing called LLPA and how it is going to affect people's mortgages and what's going to do to their payment and how much they're going to owe. And it's just been kind of crazy chatter all over the place. Um, thought you could help us set the record straight. So take it away if you would, please. Yeah, absolutely. So everybody's been talking, I believe the, a couple of uh, media outlets had reported that um, better credit scores were going to pay a 1% uh, penalty and lower credit scores, we're going to get a 1.75% break. And that data is kind of askew. And so basically what I tell people is, hey, what you see online, what you see on social media, what you see in the news, right? They write those articles and those, um, and those journalism stories to sell tickets, right? Ultimately, social media that sells tickets, right? They need to generate advertisement revenue and the only way they can get people to pay to advertise on their platform is if they have a whole bunch of eyes and a whole bunch of views. And so how do you get more eyes and more views and more shares? You have to write articles and, and headlines in a way that either people love or get really upset about because those are the two easiest emotions to evoke. So the biggest one that's been going around is, is over these LLPAs, which are low level pricing adjustments. Now, these are something that have always existed forever. Hmm, so it's not really? something new. Yeah. And so it's not something new. It's not something they created. It's not something that the president, you know, ordered them to change. There's always been LLPAs or loan level pricing adjustments. What they basically do is they say, hey, if you are this borrower with this credit score, with this down payment on this type of property, you qualify for X rate. And then as you change it, it changes the risk to Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, VA. When you change the risk, it changes the interest rate. And so what uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac did was they took a look at what percentage of people were using their loan product. Something we've seen forever is that almost always FHA has been a better product for primary residents than conventional. If you got credit scores under say 700 or even 680, the interest rate on FHA is much less. Well, also FHA just came out and reduced the mortgage insurance. So not only is their interest rate lower, their mortgage insurance is lower. And so that creates a problem for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac when they're trying to attract customers 
because their interest rates are higher and their mortgage insurance tends to be higher. So they wanted to try to offer better interest rates to uh, borrowers with lower credit scores where they had higher pricing level adjustments. So they moved around and they did give a bunch of breaks to all of the people in the lower, um, lower credit score ranges. They didn't want to eat all of those fees completely, so they did transfer some of those pricing adjustments. They increased the pricing adjustments on higher credit scores, but more importantly, higher down payments. The one thing that we saw was everyone, no matter what credit score, got a better interest rate if you were putting 5% down or less. Hmm. Really, the bulk of these uh, additional pricing adjustments happened to 20% down, whether you had high or mid-level credit. So the right? more you put down, the more you're paying. Yeah, not necessarily the more you're paying, just the potential, the higher the interest rate is. Okay. Or the, the higher the cost to the interest rate. And that was the other kind of misconception. They say, oh, well, the, you have a good credit score. You're paying a 1% hit. It's not 1% of the loan amount. It, it was 0.75% of the cost to get that interest rate. And so you could either just take an eighth of a higher percent interest rate, or you could pay a little bit more in closing costs to get the interest rate that you would have gotten. And it's not a huge hit. But the other thing that they didn't really talk about was also that that um, shelf of 20% down and that pricing level hit, again, has always been there. And the reason being is because if you put 20% down, you don't have to pay mortgage insurance, which means that uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are on the hook from day one if somebody forecloses. If you put 15% down or 16 or 17% down, you have to have mortgage insurance, even if it's only for the first year or two, that still substantially reduces the amount of risk to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. So they've always had it set up like that, where you would qualify for a lower interest rate if you were to not put 20% down. So again, nobody really discussed that. Nobody really explained that. Uh, and they just went with the big flashy news headline that would sell the most tickets. Yeah, most of what I've seen makes it look like there's an additional fee, like yeah. something that you would have to, you know, pay in addition to your mortgage payment. But from what I'm hearing from you, it actually affects your interest rate itself. Correct. It's not an additional it, fee. They just compiled that data, right? Because the, the pricing level adjustments were very small, and there's a whole bunch of buckets. So I can show you the matrix. And I mean, there's literally 5% or 3% down, 740, 720, 700, 680, boop, 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 boop. And then there's 5% down, 740, 720, 700, 680, right? And so there's all of these buckets. There's this giant grid of all of the different borrowers, right? There's one for condos. There's one for manufactured homes. There's one for townhomes. Wow. All of these, <laughs> right? So there's hundreds of buckets and they increase this one 0.25 and they increase this one 0.125 and they, and then they compile that and they're like, oh, well, on average, these people are paying 1% higher, but it's spread out over these 200 different buckets. So to the actual borrower, it's, you know, 0 0.125, 0 0.25, maybe a half a percent. And again, that's just of the cost to obtain that interest rate. Not the actual interest rate going up by half a percent. Correct. Gotcha. Okay. So that makes a lot of sense. And it sounds like this isn't really something to get our panties all in a wad about. Um, yeah, so one thing I tell everybody is, you know, rent is 100%. So... You know, yeah, do you yeah. want an eighth of a percent higher interest rate, which interest rates of, you know, if you're, if you're upset about this, rates were two, two and a half percent a couple of years ago. So this very small drop in the bucket compared to All where right. we've gone with interest rates over the past two years. Yeah. Okay. Well, you and I are here in the Jacksonville, Florida market and here in the Jacksonville market, the median price point right now is about 350000 roughly. What would that mean to someone, let's say they're doing a conventional loan and they're putting down 10% or what, whatever. Um, yeah. what, what would that mean to their payment every month? 
So again, it, it just depends on which rate you choose, but what mm -hmm. it would mean to you as an actual consumer. So once those these pricing uh, adjustments went into effect May 1st, um, so if you were to hypothetically go back in time and said April 30th, you priced out a loan and May 1st, you priced out a loan. If you're one of those borrowers who were 720 credit, um, putting 20% down, you got the biggest blunt of it, which was 0.75%. So let's just say, no matter what, if the interest rate was, let's say, six and a half percent, and on April 31st, it was free, then on May 1st, it was 0.75%. So if you're buying a $300,000 loan, uh, it's about $1,500 or so that it would cost you to then get that same interest rate. You would can always choose a higher rate to not have to pay any fees, or you can even continue to buy down the interest rate and go even lower than that. So you're saying they would pay $1,500 to basically buy down the rate to keep it at the same level. Okay. Right. If they just wrap that into their mortgage payment instead, what would we be looking at month to month difference there? Yeah, so if they if they were to take that eighth of a percent or quarter of a percent higher interest rate, so they didn't have to pay any fees, mm -hmm. um, you're looking at on three hundred and fifty thousand every eighth of a percent is probably thirty bucks a month. Okay. Um, so if it was an eighth of a percent to get that same rate, then it would be thirty bucks a month. If it was a quarter of a percent, then maybe sixty bucks a month. Again, it's each one doesn't fall into like a like an even calculation where every single one, right? There's all these fractions of money. So, and that's something we see also with FHA and VA. Mm -hmm. They have a very easy refinance product. So a lot of times a lower interest rate on those is cheaper than a higher interest rate because they don't want you to choose the higher interest rate because they know that it's very easy to refinance and lose the loan. So they almost give you a lower interest rate just to make sure that you stick around. Gotcha. Okay. So if you want to avoid the LLPAs, it sounds like you can just get an FHA loan, which is cheaper anyway right now, right? Well, FHA it, and VA also have, it's all, all loan products. Have oh, it is all loan products. Okay. And okay. It, it's just basically how the risk, again, with with how, how to determine which borrower gets which interest rate. What's your down payment? What's your credit score? What type of property are you financing, right? Because everybody has diff has additional pricing hits for con condos. Everybody has additional pricing hits for mobile homes. Why? Because condos and mobile homes are harder to resell in the event of a foreclosure than a single family residence, right? So no matter where you go or what you do, like it all just kind of boils up the same. The frustrating part is just when the media takes that shrinks it down into a headline that's designed specifically to outrage people so they can generate activity so they can charge more money to their uh, advertisers. Right. And, uh, and that brings me back to a good many of the sources that I've been hearing these news blurbs from have been saying that you're basically robbing from Peter to pay Paul. So who's getting the benefit of this and how is that working for them? It's, I mean, nobody's really getting a benefit. I, I've seen a bunch of memes where they go, oh, I'm going to go wreck my wreck my credit score so that way I can get a lower interest rate. You're not. You're still, if you're, the higher your credit score, the better the interest rate you're going to qualify for. It just may be one of those situations now where it actually, they're incentivizing you to put less down and keep more money in your pocket and in your bank than to put more down um, and potentially that, increases the risk for them, which then they increase the interest rate to help offset the risk. Gotcha. Okay. So this is nothing where people need to go out and think, oh gosh, if I have a, a great credit score, I'm being punished. To whereas yeah. if I had a, a you know 650 credit score, I could reap the rewards. <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's, that's not going on. You're still going to get a higher interest rate if you have a lower credit score and a lower interest rate if you have a higher credit score. What they really did was just kind of, they passed it between Peter and Peter uh, and not Peter and Paul. So <laughs> I tell people, you, it's not one of those things where you're going to get a benefit um, by lowering your, your interest rate or your credit scores um, and going out there and missing payments. 
Gotcha. Okay. CJ, thank you so much for clearing this up for us today. You have been immensely helpful and answering all these questions. And guys, if you need a loan and you are here in the Florida area, are you licensed just in Florida? Or I'm actually licensed in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia. So the whole awesome. East Coast up to Virginia. Okay, so um, I'm going to put CJ's uh, information up there on the screen, and if you guys need a mortgage, please contact CJ, and of course, if you need a home and you are here in the Jacksonville area, please contact myself, Lisa Alford. All right, have a wonderful day. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, you too.